Hi and welcome to the next episode of QtQML Tutorial. I will stop boring you with conceptual things. You already know the basics of Qt Framework, so let's first create first GUI together. My name is Lukas Kosinski. I am the CEO at Safe Studio, QtQML consulting company. We help our customers achieve their objectives by providing them with skilled Qt developers. QML is a declarative programming language for applications based on Qt Framework. It is part of Qt Quick module and it enables creating rich, modern, animated user interfaces and much more. It also employs JavaScript for scripting and JSON-like syntax for defining objects hierarchy. In this episode, I will teach you the very basics of QML, the syntax, um, signals and slots in QML, and also what are property bindings. We'll also do some simple JavaScript coding here. I really love QML. I hope that you will like it too. Let's go. Because QML is a declarative language, we define the effect that we want to achieve. We do this by defining components, items nested within each other. Each of these components has a specific place in the user visible scene and will be located exactly where we specify it. The most basic QML type is the item. It is empty and invisible to the user. It is the base for the vast majority of built-in components available in QML. So properties like width, height, visible, position, and many other are already there. Each type is also based on a Q object. We can easily prove this. Let's go into the documentation of the item type. You can do that easily by pressing F1 while the desired item is selected. By the way, I highly recommend you to check documentation often. You will find all the necessary information here. And the documentation pages often contain example code snippets. Yeah, and as you can see, the item has the annotation instantiates QQuick item. And as you can see, QQuick item C++ class is actually a Q object. In practice, this means that every item in QML has properties, slots, and signals. The whole point of programming in QML lies precisely in defining those three things, properties, slots, signals. Going further, we define the position and size of an object by setting its width and height, which are properties. Let me show you quickly how you specify properties. Firstly, let's import a Qt Quick window module that is needed here. And now let's set width and height. And let's also make this window visible and be black. That is how defining properties may look like. Now let's create rectangle nested in this window. Rectangle by default is white, so on a black background it's going to look good. Each item um, in QML hierarchy may have a Unix ID to allow other objects access its properties. Um, we, we now let's do anchors with hive. Yeah, we anchor it to the center of the window, which is direct parent. You will learn more about position, positioning in QML in the next lesson. And the outcome of how our application looks like is strongly bound to what properties we gave to certain items. Now, watch how simple changes of properties make the result totally different. Uh, let's change the color here. Let's make this rectangle rotated. Let's give it some radius and let's give it some color. 
you see we can also declare our own properties using keyword property it's followed by the type of the property name and and the default value that it's going to have Now, since QML items are in fact Q objects, that means we can improve them by signals and slots, right? How to do it then? Let's make this rectangle clickable. We will use mouse area type to do that. Let's nest it here inside the rectangle. Now, anchors. Now, first let's mm, give it an ID, mouse area. We use anchors fill this time as we want mouse area to cover rectangle and whole area of rectangle to be clickable actually. Now let's check mouse area documentation. Just press F1. And here we are. We want to know when mouse area has been clicked. So it most likely will be declared as a signal. So scroll down to the signal section and Boom, we have clicked signal, so let's click it and read what does it exactly do. This signal is emitted when there is a click. A click is defined by a press followed by a release. Okay, so that's the signal that we want to connect, but how to do that? Let's go back to the code. If a given item has a signal, we can connect to it by declaring a handler directly inside. The handler name is based on signals name. It starts by on and the rest is capitalized name of the signal. So in our case, it is on clicked. Then we make a colon brackets and code what it should do. Let's add the comment here. There is also a second way to connect to the slots, but I will show you that later. Now, if you want to create own signal, then it's also quite easy. Just write signal, give it a name and optionally arguments, and then you are good to go. Okay. So yeah, now, you know, property signal slots in QML, let's talk about property bindings. Let's say we want our rectangle to change color whenever it's pressed. We can simply do this by changing color property to, for example, a conditional operator expression. Um, so if mouse area contains press, it will be red and otherwise magenta. As you can see, yeah, it's working. Correctly, how does it work? Well, do you remember how Q property macro looked like? There was a notify keyword which pointed to signal informing about property being changed. Now, if such a signal is fired, then all properties relying on this property will be updated to respond to the new value. That's how property binding works in QML. This is a beneficial system system mechanism as we don't have to change many parts of the code and we can just make many properties to rely on some single property it may be problematic when the code base grows but for this tutorial we pretend that we live in a perfect world yeah before we start serious coding i wanted to mention that qml also has built-in javascript engine which allows us to use all JavaScript base types along with declaring functions um, in QML code. So just to showcase that, uh, we can write function test. Yeah, and we can code something in here. Let's put a comment here as well. And then we can invoke a dev function from the other place. In fact, uh, those JavaScript functions, expressions are very commonly used in QML. And if they are simple enough, they can benefit from property binding system too. All slots uh, that we declare are actually also JavaScript functions. Okay, 
I will not burn you with basics anymore. Let's code something. We'll create a simple QML application with two buttons. One will just print something into the console output and then also change the color. And second will close the entire application. We could, of course, use one of built-in QML types, but we'll create the one by ourselves so we better understand how bindings, functions, and QML in general works. However, keep in mind that in general, it's better to create such buttons uh, basic on existing QML types, but we won't do that today for the sake of simplicity and to learn more. Our buttons will be plain rectangles. It's easy to manipulate them um, and it will have a text and mouse area items inside. Buttons will also have a dedicated property to control buttons base color. And we'll also use property binding to change buttons color according to mouse area. We will make it lighter when hovered and darker when pressed. The last thing to do is to create a slot, uh, which will be invoked when our button is pressed. Then, having our button item ready, we can create its copy and define what um, they do. Yeah, and in one of the next episodes, we could create such a button as a separate type, but now we will do it in one file. Let's create QML project together. We start by clicking File and then New Project. Or simply, you could just click Ctrl Shift N. We select Qt Quick Application. Now we give it a name. Let's name it somehow. Mm, yeah, like that. Below is a destination folder. Let's put it here. Yeah, let's go next. Here we select a build system, in our case CMake. And next, and in the next time we choose additional options such as a minimum required Qt version or use of Qt virtual keyboard. Uh, we leave it as it is. Next, translation files, we don't need them now, so let's keep it. And here we select a kit. We select Qt 6.4 because that's the one we installed. So we click ne next. And finally, uh, we have an option to add this new project as sub project or initialize version control system, but we will leave it empty. Press and finish. Okay, now it thinks for the moment. We have main QML already yeah and here it is we have also main cpp everything's everything's ready to work for now main cpp contains just a simple initialization of qgui application with loading of main qml file uh, and the main qml files contains just an empty window now let's um, stay here for, for a second and discuss what the structure of the QML file looks like. First, we have all the necessary imports. Uh, it's a bit like including header files in C++. You can import all needed modules here. And the Qt Quick module is the most generic basic one, providing most of the basic items available in QML. You can also import other modules or folders like this import and path that way you can access all types that are declared under follow following path yeah for our example Qt quick is enough notice here that we do not add any version of module because in Qt 6 it means that you want to use the latest version of the module however you sometimes may see a version of module here like to the 15. Um, in case you are using Qt version less than six, or maybe if you want to import a specific version of module instead of the latest. Uh, the next thing is the root item of our file. It is a good practice to give it an ID 
a route to make it accessible in all children easily and to always know that the root refers to the top item. Then inside of root item you can declare all needed properties or children items. Let's start by adding the first button. So we create a rectangle and now we position it using And now we position it using anchors. Let's make bottom of the button stick to the vertical center of window. Let's also make it horizontal center match horizontal center of window. And let's also add some margin, some, some um, bottom margin to move it a bit above the vertical center. Now let's give it width and height. Let's go with 150 for width and yeah, 50 for height. Let's add text inside. Text is basic UML type for displaying uh, string labels on the screen. Let's give it an ID button text one, because that's the first button. Then we need to position it somehow. So let's anchor it to the center of rectangle like this, center in parent. We need to set some text and to actually make it visible because otherwise a user won't see anything. Click me. And now we need to make our mouse area. The next child will be mouse area. We need to know when button is clicked, right? So let's create one and yeah, mouse area. And let's give it an ID button mouse area one and let's make it anchors fill parent because we want the whole button surface to be clickable now we need to make our mouse area to be hoverable so let's set hover enable to true let's now add on clip handler already uh, but we'll fill it in a minute now let's add some property to our button rectangle we'll create property we'll create a property let's let it be property color yeah for for the base color that will be used then to, to, to modify the color a bit. Yeah, let's name it base color, let's give it a value red. Notice that you can use string names of plain colors and also hex values and also some other ways to precisely define what color you want. Yeah, finally we can customize the color of our rectangle using property binding. So let's start with checking if the button is mm, pressed so contains press and if yes let's give it um, let's give the rectangle a darker version of of the color using cute dot darker function you see it's a javascript uh, expression actually. Next, let's um, check uh, if the mouse area is hovered. Contains mouse. And if so, let's return cute dot lighter.
Yeah, that's that's the same, but to make the, the project the color lighter. Yeah, and if none of the above is true, then let's just return to base color of the button. Okay, so we should be good to go. Now let's make this button working. In on clicked signal, let's print something to the console using console lock method, just like in plain JavaScript. Clicked. Now let's build the app and test it. Yeah, and as you can see, the button is positioned correctly. I can freely change Windows position, move it, and I can also resize it. And our button is then moved accordingly to those changes. This is thanks to the property binding system. Center of the window changes, and so does the position of the button, right? And yeah, here notice that our hover and pressed color bindings should also work as expected, yes. When we click the button, we also have the output in the console, so signals and slots uh, are working too. Yeah, so I think that it's time to create a new button that will close the application. I will just copy paste our first button. Let's, let's select it. Yeah, and now let's adjust it quickly. Uh, normally we would create a custom QML type in a separate file for that, but let's keep it for later. I'm changing naming here. One, twos instead of ones. Now let's position it in some other place using top instead of bottom and to make it below the vertical center. Yes, and here we can I can show you that we can use hex value to make it green. And let's also change the text of the text to close application. And finally, let's replace the handlers function to building cute function could quit. It closes the app. Yeah, to additionally check how binding system works, let's also modify first button. And let's change, yeah, it's base color to, for example, orange, but first we need to give our button an ID. So we can refer us to, our, to the first button's base color specifically. Yeah, and here let's change the base color to orange on click. Yeah, let's test it, let's start the app. As you can see, the second button is there and it closes the app. Let's run it again. Yeah, and the first one on click uh, changes the value of the base color property. You can see that the property bindings work because um, that expression with darker, lighter works as well. Before we finish, I also wanted to show you the second way to connect to signals in QML. There is a type named connection. Connections. It allows to connect to specified target, uh, signal sender. Let's um, set the target to mouse, button mouse area 2. Mm, yeah, and here we define uh, slots. We uh, do that uh, with JavaScript functions, and the name of the function should follow the same naming as slot handlers. So in this case, on clicked. Yeah, and here, let's print something 
to the console. So again, console.log. Exiting application. Yeah, yeah, let's test it now. Click. And you see, there's a console output right before application is closed. Connection type is really useful when connecting uh, to C++ objects or items that are far away from the current file. Uh, you will learn more about that in one of the next episodes. Okay, for this episode it will be all. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope to uh, learn today with me the very basics of QML, properties, binding, signals and slots, and how to create simple QML items. Remember to subscribe to our channel and also leave me a message in comments to let me know how you like the episode. Yeah, and I hope that we see each other in the next one.